Hey there, I'm Sarah. I'm going to compare and contrast sleep and anesthetic sedation. But first, a story. So, surgery is fun. Um, I've actually witnessed a few operations myself, and one time there was this teenage girl, let's call her Sally, getting her wisdom teeth extracted, and she was quite the fighter. Uh, she kept putting her hands up to her face to like fight them off and defend herself. So they had to strap her arms down and inject propofol every few minutes, which is a much heavier sedative than the Versed that they start out with. Now keep all that in mind because it's important. So let's break this down. First of all, Sally was moving her arms as a defense mechanism and that was in the beginning, which has been termed the induction period. And in that period, it's common to see movement by the patient because there's actually a state of excitation. You can see that on EEG. So if you look at the first phase of anesthesia, it's a little bit higher amplitude than the awake state. But wait, excitation. Yeah, there's no excitation in sleep. Actually, the opposite happens for the onset of sleep. There's actually a tiny area in the hypothalamus called the ventrolateral preoptic nucleus that signals to arousal areas of the brain to quiet down. It inhibits by use of the neurotransmitter GABA. And that has to happen for sleep to occur. That's what falling asleep is. That's the biggest thing. The beginning of anesthetic sedation actually shows excitation, whereas the beginning of sleep is obviously characterized by inhibition. But recall what they did to control Sally's movements so that they could operate properly. Besides strapping her arms down, they gave her that propofol, the more powerful sedative. This put her in the maintenance period, which is more similar to a coma because the patient is unconscious at this point. There's no more awareness of the environment. But before, Sally was actually aware that something painful was happening, which is why she was being defensive. Then with the propofol, that painful stimulus was blocked from reaching higher cortex areas. Sleep, on the other hand, is not an unconscious state, otherwise you'd wake up when someone is cutting up your mouth, or just when your alarm goes off. That being said, depending on the stage of sleep that you're in, environmental disturbances may be blocked to a certain extent. One of the deeper stages of sleep, known as slow wave sleep, it's actually harder to wake someone up. And what's interesting about that is that if we look back at the EEG data, Phase two of the maintenance period closely resembles slow wave sleep, so there could be some similar biological mechanism between those two. And the other deep stage of sleep that everyone knows and loves is REM, rapid eye movement. And during REM sleep, we dream, but also our muscles are paralyzed. And the other thing that propofol does, along with block consciousness, is inhibit the spinal cord and brainstem to induce paralysis, like in REM. So, Certain levels of sedation can resemble the deeper stages of sleep. The last piece I want to add is that an important physiological function of sleep is to clear out metabolites from our central nervous system that would otherwise build up and cause disease. For example, beta amyloid is a protein emptied through the lymphatic system with the help of glial cells and vasculature during sleep and the long-term buildup of beta amyloid into plaques is a hallmark of Alzheimer's disease. The good news is the clearing or washing out of beta amyloid also happens under anesthesia. So what we can take from all of this is that sleep and sedation aren't exactly the same, but some events do occur similarly. Another little piece to consider is that if anesthetic sedation doesn't exactly mean sleep, then other sedations probably aren't as similar to sleep as we would like. So, taking Benadryl when you're restless. Guilty. So just do your best to get that good natural sleep in order to get all the necessary benefits from it. But anyway, that's all I've got. Thanks for listening.